Hey, um, welcome to this tutorial guys. We'll be going over Richardson uh, extrapolation or Richardson's extrapolation. Okay, so um, it gives us a higher order of accuracy. Okay, so last time we went over forward, backward and central difference, which gave us a order of OH2 was our maximum. So Richardson's gives us order 4. So it should be much better, but it is a slightly harder process. Um, so I've gone ahead and we are going to be using this function f of x equals x squared cos of x and we're looking for x is equal to 1 and I've got both the analytical and the solution from central difference. Okay, so now let's get the equation for Richardson's down which is quite nasty and it often throws people but it's really not that bad. But here we go. So it goes like this, f of j to the i equals... 1 over 4 to the power of j minus 1 times 4 to the power of j f of j minus 1 to the power of i minus f of j minus 1 let's make that look like a j j minus 1 to the power of mine there we go okay and so to tell us what these means so j represents the number of iterations okay and i is representative of the step size or rather what step size you're at i doesn't necessarily represent the step size but it represents where you are okay so the best way to uh, use richardson's is using an extrapolation table okay so the table uh, looks like this, so you have i, then you have hi, okay, then we have f0, okay, so here the question says we need to find f3, so we have f0, o, and i, f1, i, f2, i, and f3, i, so this is our third iteration, okay, so with Richardson's, we've been told this is our function. We have to find x at, uh, the der derivative at x equals 1. And we have uh, h equals to uh, not 0 0.01, but let's reuse 0 0.1. Okay, so let's put into the table what we have so far. So, okay, so right now we have... 1 and 0 0.1 okay so how do we fill in the rest of the table so with richardson's we have to basically if every i we're going to go to four i's um we have to divide the step size by two each time okay so here we're going to go 0 0.05 0 0.025 and 0 0.0125 Okay, and then what we also have to know is using these tables, this first row, unfortunately, it doesn't count as an iteration, but from the first, uh, from this row onwards, we have iterations, and how the table works is we never fill in these values right here, so we're working downwards, and we have a nice triangle forming. Okay, so we always plugging in values here, here, um, and actually, I think there's a bit of a mistake here. Give me one second. No, no, that looks fine. Um, yeah. Okay. So what we can do is get into how we get the value of f of zero i. Okay. So this value right here how do we get each of these okay so essentially is we're going to use the central difference method so for each value of h we have to go up to the central difference plug in x and h and get us an answer okay so for the first one we're going to plug in and here's our f and we've done this before so i'm just going to fill in the values plugging in x equals to one and um, h is equal to 0 0.1 we get 0 0.226736 for the next value we get 0 0.236031 plugging in 
h is equal to 0 0.025 and x equals 1, we get 0 0.238358. And finally, we get 0 0.238940. Okay, so, so far, nothing really new. We've, all we've done is use the central difference method to calculate these four values. Okay, now we need to look at this equation here. Okay, so if we want to get, so we want to get f of 1, 2. So what we have is 1 over, our j value is 1, so 4 to the power of 1 minus 1, 4 to the power of 1. f of j is equal to uh, 1 minus, so j naught, and we're looking at i2. Okay, so i2 is this value right here, times 0 0.236031, minus j0 again, and i1, which is that value right there. So we have minus 0 0.226731. Okay, and if we carry this out, we get a value of... 0 0.239129 okay doing the second one we have f of 1 3 which is equal to 1 over again j is still 1 4 minus 1 4 times okay so we're looking for f um, f of uh, 1 f of 0 and i of uh, now we're looking at i3 so we're looking at that value right there. So we have times 0 0.238358 minus, and it's going to be the value above it, 0 0.236031. Okay, and we get a value of 0 0.239134. Okay, so as you can see, there's a bit of a... Uh, uh, pattern so what you have is you have always for this column for this column in red we always have one over three okay we have four times the value opposite to the one we're looking for and so the value across minus the value directly above it okay so for the next one we're going to have 1 over 3, 4 times this value right here, I'm going to put a triangle, minus this value right there, which is a square, and we get a value of 0 0.239134. Okay, now we go on to the second column. Okay, and the second column actually follows a similar pattern. F of 2, uh, and the first one we're going to be looking for is 2, 2 is equal to, instead, so we have 1 over 4 squared minus 1, which is equal to 15, so we have 1 over 15, 4 squared is 16, and then once again, we have the value next to us, so the value that way, minus the value above it, okay, and that pattern continues for this column, so we have the answers to this is 0 0.239134 and 0 0.239134. Okay, again, all I did was 1 over 15 six, uh, times 16 times that number times the value above it. Okay, and if you want to know, the last column has got a very similar pattern. F of uh, 3, you can say, is 1 over... 3 to the power of, uh, sorry, 4 to the power of 3 minus 1, which is 63, times 64, times the number next to it, minus the number above it. So we times that number, minus that number, and what we get is our answer being 0 0.2339134. Okay, so using ex uh, Richardson's extrapolation, Let's put the value right here. We have f of 3 is equal to 0 0.239134. Okay, and if we look for the error here, let's see the analytical solution. If we rounded this, 
it's right about here one two three four five six decimal places so six decimal places accurate and if we look at comparing it to the central difference we only have about three decimal places of accuracy so richardson's table is actually quite easy it's a bit of a longer uh, process um, but once you know what to do it's really quite simple okay and that brings us to the end of the numerical differentiation and in the next video i will be doing numerical integration um, thanks for watching guys